All right, so this is how you map drums using Cubase and Addictive Drummer. First off, we are going to start by right-clicking over here and then going <coughs> Add MIDI Track. All right. My computer is slower than balls. Oh, oh there. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to go to this cock-ass sideways I here and click that and uh, I already have it assigned but what you're gonna have to do is, is go to drum map setup and I'll uh, send you this map if you need it and then you go to load uh, yep slower than balls alright and you go to admap.drm which is your MIDI map drum setup which I'll explain in a minute open and then you hit assign alright and then it should pop up like this and then you go up here to device and then you click VST instruments alright and that'll pop up this little guy right here and then you're gonna click right here where it says addictive drums it'll be open like this and you're gonna go down and click addictive drums click that and then this guy will pop up. <clears throat> now I have mine already uh, set up and EQ'd the way that I like it. You're going to have to tamper with it to get your sound, but I'll give you a little run through what it's going to sound like. starts to freeze and I don't know I have a cowbell don't ask it's just there all right so we have everything open to start mapping so what you're gonna go to is this little guy right here and it's called draw it's weird shaped like a pencil and everything you gonna click that and then you're going to highlight and drag over just like that Oh, and uh, sorry, you have to come over here to where it says uh, output. Click that and go and click addictive drums. So now it's recognizing that as the MIDI channel and whatnot. All right, <clears throat> so double click the event that you just drew. It'll pop up. And then I'm going to highlight up here real quick and just make a little highlight spot. It's okay. So here we go. We got your bass drum. And uh, I have these all mapped out, but as you can see, this is your bass drum. This is a side snare hit wheelie. This is a little bit of a lesser hit. This is a stick click. And if you're not retarded and reading along, then you'd understand what the rest of these are. Yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and it goes on. So... We're just going to make a simple little beat right here. Let's do a bass drum, snare drum, bass drum, snare drum, bass drum. Oh, sometimes that happens. It'll piss you off. And then uh, we'll add a crash cymbal and uh, do some uh, hi-hats. Oh, that's a pedal hi-hat. My bad. That'll piss you off. Alright. And basically what this blue line up here means is this is where it's going to be looped and highlighted. And by clicking this right here, it'll play the highlighted area over and over again. So if we come up here and go like this. Sorry, I'll turn off the and as you can see, it's a, you know, nice little round off simple beat. All right, and uh, the biggest question I had for a while is, oh, to erase, by the way, you just click on the line and drag over. <clears throat> the biggest question I had was, is how do you switch tempos? And I'd actually, before, I would just open up new sessions and record stuff in different tempos. Found out there's an easier way, because Cubase is awesome. What you do is, is hit Control-T, 
and I'll pop up this and as you can see along the side is all the BPMs, beats per minute. And uh, you can a actually like draw weird time signatures and all kinds of weird stuff. Like for instance if you want a song that's really just out there you can, I don't know, do stuff like this. It's completely irrelevant but whatever. Um. Anyway, so if you're into death metal, like I am, I'd bring the uh, thing up here. Let's go 220. And uh, let's go back and do a little, make a little blast beat. Actually, hold on. Yeah, a lot of annoying, a lot of annoying clicking is involved. And you can also turn off the sound samples from happening every time by clicking this. So I'm going to do that right quick. Alright. So. A lot of clicking. I hope you like clicking your mouse. No pun intended. And, uh, yep. And as you can see, this is just going to be a blast beat, very typical bass drum matching snare drum type of uh, blasting. Alright. And then we're going to use our hi-hat. I kind of want to go back and edit my voice later so I sound like Satan during this entire thing. I probably won't. It takes too much time, but uh, whatever. Actually, I'm dumb. Alright. Oops. So let's see what this sounds like. And as you can see, that is a pretty successful blast beat. And what I'm going to do is, just so I can show you the variance in tempos, <coughs> I'm going to take and this loop that I just made of this uh, blast beat. I'm going to take and uh, loop it. Alright, I'm going to go to edit, copy, and then I'm just going to go BAM. Now this is where that tempo thing comes in handy. You hit control T, and then right here at marker 5 where we start the loop over again, I want to slow the blast beat down just a hair. So I'm going to draw an event where it comes down here. So now this is what our sample is going to sound like. So yeah, very nifty. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you map drums. You got to have a little bit of knowledge about drumming and whatnot to actually program drums, you know, you gotta know how drums are supposed to sound to a song or else you can just make completely random stuff, whatever you want to do, but yeah, that's pretty much how you do it.